And then what about other menopausal symptoms? How are those impacting sleep? And that's um, what I'll, I'll lead to is the last part, which is hot flashes, um, which is a, yeah, the hot topic. Um, and and the, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of research that's coming out now trying to look more at the relationship between hot flushes and sleep. Because again, the, there is this paradox of how um, women who have hot flushes, there's a strong association between having hot flushes and having poor sleep. But then when people look at, um, at objective measures of sleep, they're not finding the same association. So we're clearly missing something with our measurements. Um, so just a little bit about um, hot flashes. For anybody who doesn't know what they feel like, they, they, they really are a, a sudden sensation of heat that can be range in being fairly mild to very severe. It can also lead to profuse sweating. And um, it, 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 it can be um, so, so severe with the sweating that you'd need to change your clothes or change the bed clothes at night. And can be accompanied by facial flushing as well and heart palpitations, anxiety. So sometimes you hear people talking about night sweats and that would be describing um, the, the, the sensation of when there is a hot flush and as well as the, the profuse sweating that occurs during the night. And it's still not 100% clear on what is triggering hot flashes, but it is related to the changes in estrogen. Not, not a lower level of estrogen, but a, a, a dramatic fluctuations that are occurring in estrogen around the time of perimenopause and intermenopause. And, and with that change in estrogen, um, that influences uh, the control of temperature, and then it leads to a hot flush. And it's, they're, they're very common, so upwards of um, you know, almost around, say, 60% of women will experience hot flushes. Some, of them, some, some women experience them in a mild form, and some women experience them as being very severe. Some women will have um, you know, 10 hot flushes during the day, um, others more. Some of them will have it throughout the night. Um, sometimes women will just have one or two. So there's a lot of uh, variation, variation in, in the way women will experience hot flushes. And um, the sad thing is that the symptoms do not just go on for one year they can, or, or less. They can last five to 10 years, sometimes 12 years. And um, even after the final menstrual period or, or after menopause, women can still continue to have hot flushes um, for several years. So what about sleep? Like I mentioned, there is a strong relationship between hot, flash and, uh, hot flushes and insomnia symptoms. So you can see here on this figure is um, women who are in, the, in, in menopause, those with severe hot flushes are 80% 80, 80 of them or 84% of them are likely to have insomnia. Um, so that is, a, a, is a, a huge, I mean, a very strong correlation between hot flushes and insomnia. Um, but like I say, when people have looked at, well, what about, um, how does a, when, when, we, when you look at laboratory recordings of sleep, there's not always this strong association between hot flushes and um, objective sleep measures. So what we've begun to do in the lab is to measure hot flushes. And the way we measure hot flushes is uh, with electrodes that are placed on the sternum. And we're measuring conductance, which basically um, is a measure of, because, because of during a hot flush there's sweating, then there's a decrease in resistance, and then you can, um, as a decrease in resistance, you get an increase in conductance, and that can be measured as a hot flush. And that's what's shown in this picture. This is a hot flush. This is, this is uh, lasting about six minutes, and you can see we know it is a hot flush because it has this rapid increase um, in a very, in, in just in 30 seconds, and then it stays relatively high while the sweating is happening, and then it gradually goes down back to baseline. And, and this, this um, time, um, or on the x-axis, basically, this is 20 minutes of time over here. And then, um, yeah, so I have to just also show this side, I guess. The, the hot flash just goes up rapidly and then gradually stays high and then gradually dips. Now, I want to, to finish with the last couple of slides, which is, is um, well, what can you do to fix your sleep? Um, just a, a couple of points on that. 
and because of course that's sort of what matters to you if you have a sleep problem. Um, so what's important is you have to ask a few questions. So, so the first thing is, do you have a sleep problem that is impacting your daytime function and quality of life? So everybody has a few nights where they don't sleep so well, um, and, but it doesn't have to be a problem. So it's okay to sometimes have poor night's sleep. It's not okay if you're having, um, for, for several months, sort of at least say three nights a week of very poor sleep quality and you are feeling the impact of that on your daytime function. That's when you need to do something about it. And you have to ask the questions of, well, do you have a sleep disorder? Um, so as, although sleep apnea is more common in men than in women um, across the life, lifespan, as women start to enter menopause, the risk for sleep apnea increases. So there might be a possibility of having sleep apnea, which would then need to be treated to solve the sleep problem. Um, there's also various medical conditions or psychiatric conditions that can impact sleep. Uh, so, for example, having hypothyroid, hy hypothyroidism would cause you to feel very fatigued and sleepy during the day, which might make you think that you have a sleep problem, but it could be um, due to, to low thyroid hormone. Um, and depression is, um, depress depressive disorders are um, commonly associated with difficulty sleeping. And then the solution would be, well, fix, fix the um, mood disorder and associated with fixing that, sleep will improve. And then there's many medications that impact sleep. Um, so any of uh, um, hypertensive medications, um, diuretics, uh, several, most medications can have insomnia as a side effect. So it's also important to be aware of that. And I just put there, if you have severe hot um, flashes and night sweats, then um, by fixing or by, by alleviating the hot flashes, that can improve sleep. And that leads into the whole question of, well, would hormone replacement therapy be a good solution? And um, we can talk about that if you want. Um, and finally, there are things that you can do at home. So it, it, it's, it's not like um, I'm saying that you, they, they, you, you should speak to your um, physician if you have a severe sleep problem, and then they can go through the various options. There's treatments, um, whether you would consider taking hypnotics, for example, sleep medication. But there's also a lot of behaviors that you can implement at home that can be very effective um, if you work at them. And they basically uh, work around keeping the bed, um, the bed in the bedroom for sleep. So going to bed only when sleepy, and not staying in bed if you cannot sleep. So get out of bed and do something else. And um, very, very critical is to get out of bed at the same time every day. So even if you have only managed to go to sleep very late in the night, it still is, um, is, is good for your body to get up at the same time every morning to try and get a pattern back. Um, and then resisting naps um, helps as well because if you have a nap in the late afternoon, of course it's difficult to go to sleep later that night. Stimulants um, like caffeine, um, is, it stays in your body for a long time. So having um, caffeine, caffeinated beverages late in the afternoon or evening, that can definitely um, prevent you from sleeping later. And then um, one of the important things is, is cognitive activity. Um, the overactive mind, and that's, that's one of the hardest things to change. Um, but the idea is that in order to sleep, you really need to be relaxed. And say, having, uh, have, having done work just before the moment you go to sleep, that is not a good sleep. It's not going to help you sleep because, of course, you're, you've been actively thinking about work, and then um, the moment you get into bed, your thoughts are still going through your work, and that prevents you from sleeping. So the idea is to um, do something relaxing for at least um, several minutes before you go to bed. And then, um, and, and then in terms of relating to, to hot flashes especially, a cool, um, a cool bedroom is, is helpful and even sheets that can um, be absorbent so that they remove the sweaty feeling. And then finally, uh, relaxation techniques to reduce anxiety can be very um, helpful. And so some of, these, some of these techniques can be done by yourself at home, but some of them, um, depending on how chronic your insomnia is or what the causes are, some of them do require help from, um, say, a psychologist or um, 
a doctor. And I'll end over here, but the idea is um, that hopefully with, with those techniques, you can uh, feel like the woman shown in this picture. Um, and here are some websites that you can go to for more information. Thank you very much.